Yo, today I was thinking about doing a tutorial on how to use FL Studio as a VST inside of Studio One. So let's get right into it. This is my basic template. Uh, never mind all, all the stuff here. I'm using my Stream Deck to control some dim functions and mono functions and other stuff. And also it's room correction and uh, some playback delay compensation. This is a free plugin, by the way. Very great. If you want to know more about my um, setup and my template, just comment down below and we'll get to it. So, the FL Studio VST is right here. Let me just switch that on. And I've already made presets here for, let's say, flags, if we see harmless, slice, citrus. So let's add citrus and just click monitor and. Nice, that's funny. Cool. So now we're playing Citrus inside of FL Studio. Studio One, I mean. Uh, the offset here is to align the grids of Studio One with uh, FL Studio. So I, my first bar is after four bars. So it's four quarter notes per bar, of course, in the four four. And that means it's minus 16 to get them aligned. So there. FL Studio starts counting. Uh, if I choose song. <laughs> so there. Now it's synced up. Bar 5 uh, in uh, uh, Studio 1 is now bar 5 in FL Studio. So let's just not use this for now because it's not needed to explain all this stuff. Here, Citrus was just pulled up. And let's now add a pattern in... Uh, uh, Studio One to see which issues you can uh, meet when you use FL Studio as a VST. Uh, let's just keep putting on the grid. It's, it's, it's easier to demonstrate this uh, these issues. Then, All right? Let's just do this. Boom, 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 and then we want to bounce that to get it into the. Uh, ignore this message. It doesn't understand that I have the listen bus. And you see, the bounce was empty. There's nothing there. The thing you need to do, you can do it this way. Add a new track, audio, choose instruments, FL Studio VSTi. Boom. Record. And then. Nice, it's recording. Now there's only one problem. There's delay between when the note is played and the sound comes back. And that seems to be because of MIDI delay sending the information to FL Studio before getting the information of sound back. I have figured that uh, a quite consistent way of finding the perfect millisecond number uh, for this is to go to process so on, uh, Studio One uh, uh, settings and then processing under audio setup standard monitoring latency 521 milliseconds for instruments then i go to citrus i open the inspector i drag this down i write in 5.20 oops 21 and then we record again and there things are lined up how they should be now there's one big issue that I really should talk to uh, image line about, and that is when using Flex. Because if you add a plugin, let's say you add a parametric EQ here with linear phase stuff, and it adds, if you hover here, you see 32 milliseconds extra of delay. That is, that must be compensated for. And that delay, since there's no communication between the VST and the DAW that, oh, I'm adding delay, you should maybe take care of that. Uh, Studio One will always report that uh, FL Studio uh, has a zero millisecond latency because it doesn't report any latency, which is dumb. It should be fixed. That's a huge issue because you have to do the calculations manually 
And it works great for citrus and stuff like that. Because now we just add 32 milliseconds to the number we have here. And that's 37, 21. Let's record and see if it's kind of in the right spot. And it looks good. Boom. But that's because we're using citrus. The problem arrives when we use a plugin like Flex. So let's now open. I have already made a preset for Flex. And the way you make presets is you load the plugin, right? Here you can see it. Uh, you load the... Um, what I'm trying to say, you load the FL Studio and you load the plugin in here. And then you just click here, store preset, and you save it. And when you open it next time, you will see the flex window instead of the whole FL Studio window like this. That's nice. It's just really nice. Uh, but the problem with flex here is if I add a short half a bar thing with 808s like that and then do the same I add a track instruments FL Studio blah, blah, blah. I record to that track oh it's off yeah of course it's off it's because the minus 5.21 and let's record again no it's still not right and that's the thing it just isn't consistent because all these notes if you if I loop this one a bit like this we can actually double up the amount of notes let's just group those and just add lots of short let's just do all of them all of them short really short so we can see if it's in time or not let's go You see, this one, ah, quite close. This one, not so much. This one, ah, almost. This one, not so much. So let's say you try to call it. What's wrong here? So let's open FL Studio to see if we can find an issue. And yeah, it adds 1.21 milliseconds of extra delay just having Flex open. And all the presets of Flex uses a different latency. Uh, like some pads have lots of latency. The 808s have about 121, the mobile 808s. Uh, but every uh, preset has a different latency. So let's add 121 to this. That's 642. And let's then go back here and record. And you're like, yeah, and that was right. It's too early. It's too late. It's too late. It's even later. It's uh, late correct late very late too early it's too late it's even later it's very late not late uh, almost correct late 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 no pretty good not late late very late almost okay almost okay very late very late almost okay almost okay very late. It's like here too. It's too early again. Like what? And perfect. This is perfect. The last one. Oh no, the off. Too late. Too late. Almost. Almost. Very late. It's no consistency. Every note has a different timing. And this happens only using, like I've tried uh, using Serum through FL Studio. I've tried using Citrus, 3x Ask, Harmless. Uh, even other stuff, and it seems only to happen with Flex. And because it doesn't even deliver the delay, like it doesn't uh, tell the Studio One that, oh, I'm, my VST version of FL Studio is creating this much delay, uh, you have to calculate manually, and even when you do, Flex won't be 100%, so you got to compensate for that. It sucks. I know. I know. It sucks. I haven't found a workaround, and I think I need to talk to ImageLine about that issue. 
other things you can do with uh, this plugin version is if you sync the timelines, you can create uh, to avoid the five millisecond uh, MIDI delay. You can just add your patterns within FL Studio, and they will be more tight. The delay of the plugins, the delay of is on plugin delay and everything will still affect the output signal into Studio One, but it will uh, not have the 5.21 millisecond error. And that's very great if you want to use uh, grow speed, because then you add your sample, let's add a sample into your, come on, into your, come on, into your playlist like this, and you can chop it up, and my keyboard won't, my keyboard doesn't work. Okay, whatever. Let's just do it like this. Boom. Uh, you can compensate for growth speed as like a delay that's super minimal. It's 31 milliseconds or something. So if you remove uh, flex here, you will see there's no latency. It's all synced up. So if I record now, I might even have to do this. Sorry. Oh no, shut up. Like this. Let's go. What have I done? Oh, there's no time offset. Oops. Big mistake. No. Where did I place that? Ah, oh, it's pattern mode. Ah, oh, so many mistakes. And that's in time. And if you add growth speed, it adds like 31 milliseconds of delay. So everything you need to do about that is just go to the audio. If, if you can shift manually or you can just write minus 31. And then you can use growth speed. So you just edit the sample within... Um, FL Studio to get growth speed on it and then you return. You can also save like if you use an instrument in Studio One, it's very easy to save that. Like let's say you use mm, Mai Tai and you make something with this one. If you want to save the sound of that you can just go to files here and drag this and save it as a music loop you can save the MIDI file for it and stuff like that and in that way you can take the um, resulting wave file directly into FL Studio change it boom bring it back it's not the quick the uh, quickest it's not ARA but it's quite quite quick uh, so yeah Plugins that are great that follow FL Studio is Flex, the free Flex that's great to use within Studio One. Also Slicex because Impact, which follows Studio One, has some weak um, editing abilities when it comes to the pads. You need to edit stuff before you place it into Impact because you can't add uh, fade-ins that's uh, visually represented up here or slowdowns and stuff. Is you need to make automation to make that stuff work. It's not like in uh, SliceX, if I load a SliceX here, every single pad has its own uh, LFOs and stuff that you can edit. And you can also edit, uh, uh, do lots of editing, like reversing it and stuff down here. And just turn off auto dump because it will dump what you do if auto dump is on it will dump it into the playlist in FL Studio and you don't want that um, and yeah did I show how to make a preset if you load FL Studio VSTi and you open let's say flex is that what you want like this you remove this one now it will play straight through then you just go here Store preset, flex, and the next time you open it, it will be like opening the flex preset. Boom. Flex opens. Great. 
So any questions, leave a comment down below. If you want to see my setup with uh, uh, regards to the template I'm using and stuff like that, just give me a shout out. And also, if you own FL Studio and Studio One or Ableton, I think I think it's the flawed VST version of FL, FL Studio that is the problem here. You could give some feedback. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do it at least that FL Studio VSTi should uh, report its latency to the host. I just I don't get why you wouldn't add that functionality. Like FL Studio has always been a bit late about uh, latency compensation and all that stuff, like low latency monitoring modes and everything like that. You got to do a lot of it manually if it messes up. But how hard can it be to just take the number that is reported within Apple Studio and sending it out in the VST version, just like any other like contact library, whatever you use. If it adds delay by using a look-ahead compressor, it will tell the DAW, and the DAW will automatically compensate. But VS, FL Studio VSTi does not tell uh, the host what its latency is. We should tell image line and tell them to fix it. It can't take too long. So maybe the next version of FL Studio, uh, that issue is fixed. And also, I'm going to report the issue about Flex not being able to stay consistent because it changes its latency almost, it seems like. That... I'm, I've tried a few plugins like VSTs, and I've never seen that with anything but Flex. The fact that you can place notes on a four four grid, bam, 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 four quarter notes, and one is before, one is after, one is slightly in the right place, and one is way slow. It makes no sense. Like why? Guess we'll never find out before they, but they they can. So. No, thanks for your time, and hopefully you learned something, and see you later.